migrant crisis on the southern border with Mexico. Fresh images show over a thousand people illegally crossing into Texas. Just stunning pictures, these aren't they? Officials say they're overwhelmed, apprehending thousands of people each day. A little earlier, I caught up with Kristen Tate in Houston, who explained the unfolding crisis. That's right. And the media is not really reporting on this issue right now in the U.S., but it's just as bad and it's still continuing. Uh, in August, I was just looking at the figures from August, 6,000 people were apprehended every single day, Chris. And that's just the people getting caught. Uh, but the Biden administration and the Democrats, they don't want attention being drawn to the border right now. They're very happy that the media is not reporting on this because recent polling has found that the majority of Americans, even Democrats, want uh, much stricter border security. 64% uh, of registered voters want stricter measures at the border. Only about 36% think that Biden should keep doing Doing what he's doing. Uh, and I talked to so many people. I live down in Texas. Obviously, we're a border state. And so many people just think, oh, Biden and the, and the Democrats, they don't care about the open border. They don't care about the border. I'm not sure about that. I think they do care and that this is very intentional. They are intentionally leaving that border open. They want uh, essentially uh, basically new U.S. cities imported into this country for a variety of reasons. One, I think, is cheap labor. Another, I, I do think, is that they want to import new voters. We have people like Chuck Schumer openly saying now that he wants to give amnesty to every single illegal immigrant in this country. That is a bunch of new voters for the Democratic Party, and they're being open about this, Chris. It's it's unbelievable. Extraordinary. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the, the crisis continues. Yeah, it's a shocking crisis, uh, and and of course, the vice president, Kamala Harris, is supposed to be in charge of this issue. She's obviously failing. But just a few days ago in Washington, the president was asked why he wouldn't visit the border. He's never been down there to have a look at the situation and have a look what he says when he was asked. Because there's a more important thing going on. They're going to invest billions of dollars in a new enterprise. He's got more important things to do, Kristen. I wouldn't have thought there are too many issues more important for any nation state than their own border security. Well, the most important thing for Biden politically is not having a photo op of himself down at the disaster, uh, the border, which is a disaster, um, because that would force the media to cover the issue. And it, it infuriates Americans what's going on down there. Even Latinos, um, you know, Hispanic voters are starting to turn away from the Democrats, and it's largely because of this issue. Right before we went on air, I was looking at these incredible statistics. Uh, in, in 2016, Donald Trump only got about 28% of the Hispanic vote. Fast forward to 2020, Trump had gotten 46% of Hispanics, and that trend is continuing in the midterms this year. It wasn't a great year for Republicans, but one real bright spot was Hispanic voters. And I really think it's because Hispanics who are hardworking people in this country legally are completely fed up with the open border. The Biden administration knows this. They know it also infuriates a lot of their, their voters, just blue dog Democrats and moderate Democrats. So the last thing they want is a photo op down there. They don't want the media covering it. So of course he's got more important things to do. I mean, almost <laughs> anything he could do could be more important than that for him politically. <laughs> He should have been more honest and said, uh, there's nothing more important than me not going to the, the Mexican border. <laughs> Let's move on to another issue. And in the latest tranche of revelations from Twitter, now that Elon Musk is running the company, we see a blow-by-blow -blow descriptions or machinations within the company about how to ban Donald Trump permanently. They're actually looking for a pretext to ban him. I know they, they hate Donald Trump so much. They have a seething hatred for Trump. And uh, this is just another example of that. What really infuriates me about all of this, uh, it, of course, the Donald Trump ban is part of it. But it was just the fact that we were right. Conservatives were right for years when we were saying, I think I think we're being shadow banned. I think my tweets aren't being seen. You know, of course, Trump was part of that. But even just normal conservatives and commentators, we've been saying this for years. And Twitter executives went out in public over and over and said, oh, we don't shadow ban. And we certainly don't shadow ban based on political views. We know now that is completely untrue. Uh, you had people like Dan Bongino, James Woods, Project Veritas either get banned or suppressed or have their tweets not able to be seen 
just because they were conservatives. This was not going on, obviously, with liberal tweets. And then the icing on the cake, Chris, is that uh, around the 2020 election, Twitter executives are meeting regularly with the FBI. I mean, these are the same people on the left screeching about election interference and having trust in our elections. And they were the ones who were, uh, you know, engaging in election interference by suppressing certain speech, creating false narratives, and literally working with government officials to do so. It is just so scandalous. But once again, the mainstream media is uh, choosing not to cover this story. So if you go out on the street and you talk to any old voter who's not, you know, like an informed conservative, if you talk to people, they have no idea any of this is even happening. A lot of Americans don't even know about the Twitter scandal. Yeah, it is extraordinary the way a lot of the media manages to avoid a lot of this stuff. There's no disinfectant like sunshine, and uh, it is just great that all this is being revealed. But uh, other media should be looking at it. Uh, but, uh, of course, they're all complicit. That's the problem. Now, yes. Christmas is not far off. I presume President Joe Biden will have even more days off over, over Christmas. He's been <laughs> criticised for having too many days resting at home at Delaware and the like. Let's hope he has a decent Christmas though and recharges and this is the last time we speak to you before the end of the year Kristen so thanks for joining us on the program this year and we look up uh, look forward to catching up in 2023 thanks Chris and I have to say every day that Joe Biden isn't doing something is probably better than a day when he is doing something because he's so incompetent so I take I hope he takes a bunch of days off for Christmas and rests up um, I guess that's what he kind of always does. But the less that man does, the better. We don't need any more damage. But Merry Christmas to you, Chris. Always a pleasure being on your show and look forward to joining in the new year as well. Yes, indeed. We'll be catching up with Kristen next year. Love her commentary from the States. Let's hope Joe Biden isn't given a new push bike for Christmas.